Now welcome to another lightning response video where I'm going to try and combine two questions into one video because I think there's an interesting relation between the two. Anyway, I'll read both of them up front, starting with this one from Suik V who asked, Hey Thor, we're always talking about how Disney put political messaging in the sequels. However, though they did certainly make a big deal out of it in the media and may have been heavily inspired by that messaging, I'd argue there is very little preaching on screen. I would attribute the resulting mess more to incompetence rather than anything else. Any thoughts? There was also this one from Mac, i.e. 7XU, who asked, Hey Thor, so you talk a lot about how politics in these new movies is hurting them, and a big reason as to why they are losing money. Yet Barbie is a very political film and is doing great at the box office. Why do you think that is? Okay, so to start with the first question, I tend to agree that there really isn't any sort of overt political messaging in the sequel films themselves that they're trying to hit you over the head with or any sort of direct preaching right at you. Not exactly anyway, and more on what I mean by that in a minute. Though sure, at one point, The Last Jedi seems to take a bit of a shot at capitalism, but honestly, that just might be one of the funniest, most ironic things ever put in film. Having a Disney Star Wars film take a shot at capitalism when Disney essentially paid $4 billion for that franchise in order to make even more money than that off of it. I mean, if capitalism had a logo, it might just be the Star Wars logo, considering as of 2012, shortly before Lucas sold, the franchise was estimated to have brought in around $20 billion in total over its first three and a half decades of existence. And because George Lucas passed on a $500,000 director's fee from the studio that he was supposed to be given by them, in favor of keeping the licensing and merchandising rights for himself, which the studio was all too happy to do. They were all too happy to trade $500,000 for that. Well, as a result of that, a good portion of that $20 billion went directly into the pocket of George Lucas. Anyway, no, the sequels didn't really have any overt or in-your-face sort of political messaging or moments where they're really kind of getting up on their soapbox and preaching to you or telling you exactly what they want you to think. Though that said, they did have one that I think was supposed to be subtle. There was still clearly a sort of intent behind the films that very much comes through in them, which is that girls or women are just as good as men, if not better, with Rey very much being the embodiment of that message, though Holdo putting Poe in his place could be seen as that as well. And as I've said before, I don't think there's a problem with the message itself that women are capable and can become a Jedi and all that good stuff. Nor do I think that virtually anyone, or anyone who is a real Star Wars fan anyway, I don't think anyone was initially upset or surprised by the fact that they opted for the main character of this new trilogy to be a woman. I think that was a good and expected call on the part of Disney and Lucasfilm, especially when you realize that, of course, they want to expand the audience of the franchise and lure in more female customers and that the male fans have a track record of liking and appreciating good female characters in the franchise, despite many trying to argue to the contrary, simply because they didn't like some of the latest ones. And a big part of the reason for that dislike was that not-so-secret intent, that it seemed to dictate and or maybe limit the story to a degree. The message of it all detracts from the quality because it seems like there is a, shall we say, unwillingness to show Rey be weak or not good enough at nearly anything and everything. Which is, of course, a problem considering weakness and failure, funny enough, are the things we, the audience, tend to connect with the best or easiest. We get that from our own lives. Things don't always go the way we plan or the way we want them to go. And so we like to see or relate to people persevere, regardless of initially being defeated or having problems, and then eventually coming out on top. Problem is, Rey always feels like she's playing from ahead from the very start. Instead of being the underdog we want to root for, she seems to automatically learn things or know things that are supposed to require time and training. And she beats one of the main antagonists of the trilogy at the end of the first film. And not because it makes for a good story, but because it says to women, look how amazing you are. And so because of all of this and more, a lot of men can't help but watch the Star Wars sequel trilogy and feel like they're being lectured at. That they're being told women are better than them in a film franchise that, if we're keeping it completely honest here, has always been more geared towards young men than anything else. With George Lucas himself even saying he made it for 12-year-old boys. Which isn't to say that women or girls can't or didn't like it either. Plenty of them loved it from day one since that very first film. And there have been many, many more joining the fandom as the years go by, which I think is awesome. But if the argument from them, from Kathleen Kennedy and others who talked about the importance of putting female characters in Star Wars and making them even more prominent even before the sequel trilogy kicked off, 
If their argument is that Star Wars is not easily accessible for women or girls because it doesn't feature great female characters for them, which is BS, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt for the argument here. Anyway, if you say Star Wars is hard for women to enjoy because it lacks great female characters, then it only makes sense to assume the same would apply to men and male characters, especially given, as they even basically admit with their own argument, it had previously always prioritized or had better male characters. It had always been made for them before, and that's what was a barrier to entry for women, they claim. And so in the case of the sequel trilogy, which lacks good male characters and seems to dismantle or tear down previous ones, well, by, again, their own logic here, men should have every right to not like the films and complain about them because they don't cater to them, they don't have characters for them to relate to and be inspired by, the same way apparently women have been upset previously or unable to enjoy Star Wars to its fullest because of poor or a lack of female characters in those previous films. But anyway, even with this emphasis on female characters that we can certainly argue impacted the quality of the story negatively because of how much focus was put on it, though I don't think that was the only problem with the films or even close to it, nevertheless that was a contributing factor to the dislike of the films. Though even with that, the Star Wars sequel trilogy was still overall a financial success for Disney and Lucasfilm despite the fact that it pretty much decimated the fan base. Those films still made money. Now, I don't think it's anywhere near as big or as successful as it could have been had the films or overall story been better. I'm not saying it got anywhere near its fullest potential. And I say all that because box office results only went down as it went on, with the third and final film of the trilogy making only half what the first one did. But that half was still roughly one billion dollars, which ain't bad. And I think that, relatively speaking here, those impressive results for the final film for The Rise of Skywalker, which we could certainly argue from a pure filmmaking perspective was the worst of the trilogy, I think its quote-unquote success just goes to show how, especially at the time, how big the Star Wars name or brand was. That even an arguably terrible movie that alienated a good chunk of its audience, it still earned over a billion dollars. I mean, I hate to be so crude, and oddly enough, I don't hate The Rise of Skywalker, but they basically served crap on a plate with that film, and people still ate it up to the tune of a billion dollars. And so basically, box office success has never been an indicator of quality. If it was, the Transformers and Fast and Furious franchises would be regarded as masterpieces. And all this finally brings us to the Barbie movie and the success it's currently having, so much so that it'll likely pass up the box office gross of the aforementioned Rise of Skywalker soon enough. It's well on its way to being one of the biggest films of the year. And so, what do I think is going on here? Why is it doing so well despite always saying politics in films tends to turn people off? And it doesn't always happen that way. Of course, there are political films that do very well. I think Oppenheimer is doing quite well at the box office, and it is a very political film. But anyway, what is the deal with Barbie? Why is this film doing so well even though it has a very overt feminist message? Which isn't my assessment of it, but rather has been said or claimed by virtually everyone involved in the creation of it. They have not been shy about saying exactly what this movie is all about, with Margot Robbie, who plays Barbie, even calling it a Trojan horse for the message. And first of all, well, it's the brand, right? The Barbie name, or doll, is without question the most popular and beloved toy for girls of all time. I'm sure almost all women were given a Barbie at some point in their childhood to play with, right? And I'm sure plenty of mothers and daughters and maybe grandmothers are going to see this film together because of the power of nostalgia, because of a love of Barbie. And speaking of the power of nostalgia, just take a look at how much The Force Awakens made. Over $2 billion. And it didn't make that much because it was one of the greatest films ever made. It made that much because a lot of people automatically went to see it because of the name and nostalgia. Nostalgia that faded away over time or after that film because by the end of the trilogy, as I pointed out earlier, the box office revenue was cut in half for the final film for The Rise of Skywalker. And again here, box office success is not an indicator of quality. That's not how it works. Which isn't to say no one enjoys the Barbie movie that they're just going because of nostalgia or whatever else it might be. I'm sure plenty of people are loving the film. And they might be loving it either despite the messaging or because they uh, somehow didn't really notice it. Or maybe they enjoyed it because of the messaging. I mean, I don't think it surprises anyone that this film has a, shall we say, empowering message for young women, or women of all ages. I think we all knew that in 2023, the Barbie film wasn't going to be something completely fun and frivolous that didn't have anything to say about our society. 
Now, I think maybe just how prominent that message is could be considered surprising to some, but also keep in mind it's a message many either agree with or at the very least don't feel offended by. I mean, a lot of women, feminist or not, can get on board to some degree with this idea that the film is preaching, that the patriarchy is the cause or root cause of all evils in the world. In other words, Star Wars being impacted by the message of female empowerment is going to stick out like a sore thumb, to be completely honest with you, because it is a franchise that has always appealed more to men or boys, which again isn't to say women can't love it. My wife loves Star Wars as much as I do. My sister loves Star Wars. My mother loves Star Wars. I know a lot of female fans that love Star Wars. And flat out, most people, again, mostly men, don't go to see a Star Wars movie to get a message about female empowerment. That's just not what they're signing up for. While with Barbie, well, for some of them, that is exactly what they are going to see. And for others, it's not going to surprise them at all when it's there, and they're going to either tolerate it, or agree with it, or ignore it, because they just want to enjoy Barbie. They just want to enjoy this thing that they have such a strong attachment to. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about all this. Why do you think the Barbie movie is so successful? Are you surprised at how successful it is, or did you expect it? Or you could always, of course, ask a question for a future lightning response video. Just start your comment off with Hey Thor and ask away. Whatever you choose to do, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars and some Barbie, I guess. And until next time, thanks for watching.